Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Dirty Dozen. Scammers use every trick in their communication arsenal to steal your identity, personal financial information, money, and more. And wow, how many tricks do those scammers have up in their arsenal? Well, at least a dirty dozen. The Dirty Dozen. Sounds familiar. Isn't that the name of that donut shop? Yeah, the donut shop across the street. They attract customers with the baker's dozen. But we, we provide the people with the Dirty Dozen Donuts. Donuts dumped in the deep fryer, filled with equal parts six-month-old bacon grease and dirty motor oil. Once fried to a hot, sticky mess, the dirty dozen donuts are flung from the fryer directly to the dirt, where they sit, marinating in the dank, damp, dark, until pickup. Wow, that sounds like horrible customer service. Honestly, is that donut shop run by the IRS? IR 2022-121 June 8, 2022 Washington Suspicious communications in all its forms designed to either trick, surprise, or scare someone into responding before thinking is number 7 on the 2022 quote dirty dozen in quote scams. So donut number 7 on the dirty dozen donuts that's like that rancid jelly filled donut that we're worrying about here. It's on their warning list for the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service announced today, warning everyone to be on the lookout for bogus calls, texts, emails, posts online to gain trust or steal. So obviously this would include some of that phishing stuff that we're familiar with, but because of the changing of the landscape with new technologies out there and then the laws changing and us dealing with responses to the pandemic, that's going to cause more people to be in a situation where they're more likely to be responding to some of these kind of uh, methods that we're familiar with. But, you know, you could be a whole lot of different variations to them as we have different circumstances. So criminals have used these methods for years and they persist because these tricks work enough times to keep the scammers at it. So obviously some of these tricks you can think of as the shotgun kind of approach where they're basically gonna send a whole lot of stuff out and because there's changes to the laws and uncertainty that it is happening, then all they need is to, is to have a few people that will, will take up these kind of shotgun approach methods in order to possibly make that a profitable thing or you could have more targeted email kind of scams where they can't basically hit as many people but they can get quite creative if they're going after say one individual and trying to gain trust from one individuals with scammy kind of stuff so victims are tricked into providing sensitive personal information money or other information this can be used to file false tax returns and tap into financial accounts among other scam uh, schemes so obviously the tax returns are a big incentive these days. So if you can get, if they can get the personal information to do stuff like file the tax returns, or if there was unemployment kind of stuff that they can file for and that kind of stuff, it's becoming uh, more valuable because of the changes in the laws, because you've got a lot of, lot more stuff, especially on the low income side of things with the refundable credits. And therefore that kind of identity theft is gonna become more attractive to, to scammers. So quote, if you are surprised, if you are surprised or scared by a call or text, it's likely a scam to proceed with extreme caution, uh, said Commissioner Chuck Reddick. So clearly, when you're thinking about these kind of things, there's usually going to be some kind of call to action that they're going to want, and there's going to be some kind of threat, which could just simply be a timing thing. They might say, "Well, you got a refund or something like that." Or we, we're, the, the government's giving out a bunch more money. You may not have heard about it, but we're giving out money. And you have to respond like right now, which obviously is a timing threat, or you can have actual negative threats, which would be, of course, you know, do this now or the iris is going to come to your door, uh, like in the next five seconds or something like that. Anything that has that kind of kind of setup, uh, which is designed to have a panic in you to trigger a panic response so that you give the information or click on whatever link immediately is usually someone that's, you know, not being not being kind, right? Trying to do something scammy. So quote, I urge everyone to verify suspicious email or other communication uh, independently of the message in question, end quote. So obviously if you're in a panic situation, then you want to fix it fast. So you click on the link, you go to the website, you try to handle whatever problem that someone says that you have or that they have or whatever. But it's best, of course, if you were to put the put that down and then go to the IRS website, possibly directly, if it has something to do with the IRS, for example, and say, oh, is there a 25th stimulus payment that they just sent out 
like this week or is that just this email that's just making stuff up or something like that and then and then check it out from the source even though that takes longer the irs has compiled the annual dirty dozen list for more than 20 years as a way of alerting taxpayers and the tax professional community about scams and schemes the list is not a legal document or a literal listing of agency enforcement priorities it is designed to raise awareness among a variety of audiences that may not always be aware of developments involving tax administration as part of the security summit Oh, here we go with the security summit. They're just like the Justice League kind of, but and they come in and save the world. So it's part of the security summit effort with the states and the nation's tax industry. The IRS has made great strides in preventing and reducing tax related identity theft, but it remains a serious threat to taxpayers and tax professionals, probably because Lex Luthor's got into the tax scamming game of things and the security summit has to respond who don't adequately protect social security numbers so obviously social security numbers are a target because those are the things that could possibly be used to file tax returns and do other kind of stuff and possibly then try to get access to this increase in money <laughs> that is there due to the fact that we have more of these kind of refundable credits and clearly the social security number system is kind of antiquated these days because obviously we've got one social security number that we've been giving to you know, we, we've, we've been probably trying to memorize it on the gra on our at grade school by repeating it to ourselves and everybody at that point in time. Then we gave it to every financial institution and everybody that we worked with and so on. So uh, it'd be nice. I'm not I'm not saying that we should go to some high tech thing or a chip in our forehead or something, but maybe you know we should be changing the social security number every once in a while or something. I don't know. It seems like that number could be compromised for many people <laughs> so anyways and other personal information for example criminals uh, can quickly file a fake tax return using a stolen social security number in the hope that it has not already applied on another filed return and that's of course an attempt to, to tap in to some of these refundable credits so even if they have a very low income or something like that they might try to they might try to get some refund for it even though there's no withholdings or anything that's being reported for example so people frequently don't know they are a victim of identity theft and they until they are notified by the irs of a possible issue with their tax return or the return is rejected because the ssn social security number appears on the return already filed so you try to file your tax return and the irs says no nah, someone you already filed someone that who was you already filed it's like well that wasn't me but it looked like you because you're a number and we have that number already. And you know, so that's how it goes. So here are some common scams the IRS continues to see. Taxpayers should uh, take extra caution with these schemes which continue to evolve and change. So we got the text message scams. These scams uh, are sent to taxpayers' smartphones and can uh, re reference things like COVID-19 and or stimulus payments. So again, the stimulus payments, the response to the stimulus payments, that was something we've not seen before. Changes to the tax law make people think, well, maybe the tax, maybe the IRS is doing something crazy again, it's a crazy new thing. And so they don't usually text message you, uh, however, but obviously when people are checking their text messages while they're driving or on a roller coaster or something like that, you, you might be more likely to try to just respond to it at that point in time. So these messages often contain bogus links claiming uh, to be IRS websites or other online tools. Other than IRS secure access, the IRS does not use text messages to discuss personal tax issues such as those involving bills or refunds. The IRS also will not send taxpayers messages via social media. So if you get, if you get a tweet or if you get a face message, I got a face message from the IR, the IRS auditor met me in the metaverse. They don't, they, I, I, I can imagine that probably happening at some point, but not now, they're not meeting you in the metaverse. It's not really an IRS. So if a taxpayer receives an unsolicited NS, NSMS text that appears to be from either the IRS or a program closely linked to the IRS, the taxpayer should take a screenshot of the text messages and include the screenshot in an email to phishing at irs.gov with the following information. Why? Because are they going to solve my problem over there at the IRS? No, they're going to put it in their little database and, and maybe <laughs> maybe compile some information. So it's still nice to do. You might have do your little part of helping 
to, to stop the scammers out there, although, you know, it doesn't seem like anybody's really stopping it. But, but you know, you can send it out. That's the thing we want to do. So you're going to be putting the date, the time, uh, and the time zone. They received the text message, phone number that received the text message. The IRS reminds everyone not to click any links or open attachments in unsolicited, suspicious, or un un unexpected text messages, whether from the IRS state agencies or others in the tax community. I just turned the phone off completely. Seems like everybody that's trying to contact you is trying to do something mean. Any case, email phishing scams is the next on the list. The IRS does not initiate contact with taxpayers by email to request personal or financial information. So you got the good old email. They're not texting you. They're not doing the super fancy new thing. They're just sending out the good old phishing email. The IRS doesn't, the IRS is more antiquated than that. They don't even contact people with emails still. They're back in snail mail days. So, so, so if, you, if it's not from the snail mail, then it might not be from the IRS. The IRS initiates most contacts through regular mail. If a taxpayer receives an unsolicited fraudulent email that appears to be from either the IRS or a program closely linked to the IRS, report it by sending the email as an attachment to the phishing at irs.gov. Why are they going to help me out with my problem? Are they going to stop the email? No, they're not going to. They're going to put it in their little database program. <laughs> so, for, but you're going to do your part. You're doing your part by doing that. And so it's important. The report the phishing online scams page. You can report it here. There's a link to that on irs.gov. irs.gov provides complete details. Phone scams. We got the phone scams. The IRS does not leave pre recorded urgent or threatening messages. So if someone says, This is the IRS. We are outside your house right now. If you don't send what money to this gift card account number, then we're going to attack or something. That That's not what they typically do on, on the phone scams. Usually they send a letter again. It's usually like snail mail, slow rolling bureaucratic agency hitting you with the stick of penalties and interest and, until you're unaware, until you finally realize that things have gotten crazy with penalties and interests and whatever and many variations of the phone scam victims are told if they do not call back a warrant will be issued for their arrest other verbal threats include law enforcement agency intervention department or a revocation of licenses we've got the SWAT team right outside your house right now if you don't send the past due amount that's not really how it works you criminals can fake or quote spoof quote end quote caller id numbers to appear to be uh, anywhere in the country including from an irs office so they can say well check my authentication this phone message is coming directly from an irs office the one that's kind of funny is when they say check the identification this phone message is coming from you because and that means I hacked into your system or something like that. And you're like, no way they hacked into the system. And now they're, I don't know. Anyways, this prevents taxpayers from being able to verify the caller's true number. Fraudsters also have spoofed local sheriff's offices, state departments or motor vehicles, federal agencies and others to convince taxpayers uh, the call is legitimate. The IRS and its authorized private collection agencies will never call to demand immediate pay payment using a specific payment method, such as a prepaid debit card, gift card, or wire transfer. I still love the gift card thing. The SWAT team is outside your house. Please send the money to this gift card, says the IRS. The IRS doesn't make you send money to a gift card. That's, that's weird. They don't do that. The IRS does not use these methods for tax payments. Threaten to immediately bring a local police or other law enforcement groups to their taxpayers, arrest them uh, for not paying. So they're typically not taking action like that. The IRS is a slow moving bureaucratic agency. You're typically well aware of the actions that they're gonna be taking because they've told you at least 60 days in advance. So demand uh, that taxes, and they tell you by letter typically. So, but in any case, demand that taxes be paid without giving the taxpayer the opportunity to question or appeal the amount owed. So they're not just gonna be like, well, I don't owe the taxes because, you know, they're not, they, you have the right to basically say, the, you know, to, to appeal the decision. Ask for credit or debit card number over the phone. So they're not going to ask for that information over the phone. They don't do that kind of stuff. 
generally the IRS will first mail a bill to uh, any taxpayer who owes taxes. All tax payments should only be made uh, payable to the U.S. Treasury and checks should never be made payable to third parties. So it's like, just make the check out to John Smith and then I'll give it to the IRS because I'm the agent. You know, no, no, that's not how you, I've, I've, I I've paid the government directly to the Treasury. So for anyone who doesn't owe taxes and has no reason to think they do, uh, do not give out any information. Hang up immediately. And this is the hard thing for most people because the scammers prey on be nice people and you're like, but I don't wanna just hang up. I don't, I don't think this is legitimate. I would just say, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna contact the IRS directly myself. If you're legitimate, that's fine. I'll go directly to the source and hang up and, and don't feel bad about it. For more information, see IRS warning scammers work year round, stay vigilant. There's a link to that here. There's links to all the other wonderful stuff we said there was a link to. There'll be a link to this in the description.